old artists are still getting to the bag. And when I say old artists, I do mean old old artists. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is a fact. Check out this stat right here. I think artists y'all will find this interesting. Man, um, this is a list of composers, right? How much would composers earn today on Spotify based off of numbers that I believe they're still seeing and their activity? That's did you get a chance to look into that? That's yeah. that's about right, right? That's yeah, based off like rough estimate of current stuff. Right. Current yeah. things that are actually happening today. Right. So you got Johan Bach. You know, usually we just go off the last names back then. Two hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars. Well, two hundred sixty seven thousand eight hundred seventy eight dollars off of Spotify a year. Twenty two K a month. Beethoven will be getting two hundred thirty six K. Wolfgang or Mozart. Damn, I don't even recognize some of these names when I, <laughs> when I, when I say it like that. 235K. Now, when we go way deep, I don't even recognize some of these classical artists. I'm not going to lie. But we all know the top three. So keep that. There's actually a couple of lessons that I think comes from that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of lessons. But the first lesson I think that this talks about is, I mean, longevity. When your, when mm-hmm. your audience. There, bro. When, when they last. Boy, they last, bro. Yeah, bro. You've had literally <laughs> centuries to build your fan base. And, you know, when your music is kind of seen as like a, a cultural apex, right? Like classical music kind of has that mm. stigma of being for a certain demographic of people, a certain caliber of a person, right? And I don't think that's going away anytime soon. So yeah, I, I like that. I, I, I like wish that. there was a way to like, one, to see how much money they were making back then and then compared it to, right? Would it be paid I more today more. or paid I less? I bet you it was I feel more, like bro. it had to it be more, to bro. Because yeah. they were getting funded by people back then. Yeah, exactly, yeah, bro. And most economy. of them, music didn't pop off until they died. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. a lot of them were, like, the definition of a struggling artist. Like, I know we talk about the struggle artists today, but no, they were truly struggling yes. artists. You know, and like you yes. said, unless they were funded by some some high end wealthy person or something. But I would love to just get that comparison. Like, what was Beethoven making back then? You know what I'm saying? What was, what was you know? Sure, man. Do the do a quick little Google on your phone real quick. Look that up. But while, while we while Jacory does that, like Jacory said though, it, like we talk about a fan base lasting, right? So we already talk about we might as well in some ways work just in twenty one savage saying. That Nas, <laughs> that Nas isn't relevant, except for the fact he just got a strong fan base and good music. That right there sounds like a straight troll. I'm like, I can't believe that there's so so much hypocrisy in that statement. You're not relevant, but you got a strong fan base, a loyal fan base, yeah. and actually, and good music. But we hear that lasting value. We see somebody like Nas, who would probably be what 25 to 30 years in now, some somewhere, somewhere in that there. range, yeah. right? And then you go hundreds of years. So what does lasting look like? And I think when we talk about, let's say Nas, right? Something that's more achievable and what most artists are thinking about, lasting throughout your lifetime, that means making that really powerful connection with that set of people, Mm -hmm. whoever that set of people is, right? And then of course you can vary the size of that, but making a real impact and connection with those people and continuing to remain relevant with them, right? But you touched on something that I think creates extra lasting value that never really gets talked about where you said the classical artist that genre in general Mm -hmm. really right is a cultural apex right Mm -hmm. it's symbolic with a certain culture so it makes me think are there ways that artists in modern times can make themselves synonymous with pockets of culture so they can last you know like, what do you think about that? It's a good question. I, I, I think it's easier for more niche artists to do, mm. right? So we, the last part we talked about, like the the Jersey club house artists. If you're a person that's listening to that type of music, where most of those artists don't get to be big or mainstream, then there are probably going to be people in there that are the apex of that culture because that that music scene as a whole isn't just like massive, right? Or hasn't right. gotten it yet. Versus pop, right? Who can become the apex of pop music when there are so many massive pop artists, right? Is it going to be Taylor Swift? It's going to be The Weeknd? Is it going to be... Nah. Nobody after Michael, really. Yeah, exactly. Right, right? yeah. So I think it's much harder to do currently in the more mainstream genres, but the subcategory genres that come up, 
that just pop up like randomly every couple of months or so. I think for those people, it's a, it's a bit easier because mm. we've seen what happens when niche cultures get a strong like foothold and they last. Uh, they create these massive pockets of, of of fans and artists that go under the radar. But then if you learn about it and you know, you're like, oh shit, this is way bigger than I, I thought it was, right? Right, right. And then so I think in that world, yes, pop culturally or mainstream, probably not. I can't see it. I could see that because in that smaller pocket, right, there's always this idea of respect, mm-hmm. right? Like, if you're into this genre, this isn't one of those fly by night, no pop shit, no yeah. superficial like you shit. Know, you gotta know, you gotta know yeah. right? And you gotta respect basically, you know, the four founders or who four or forefathers or whoever looked at at the, at the peak of that specific genre. So that makes sense. I can see that, and I think there's also an opportunity to be symbolic in ways beyond music itself, but still do it through your music, Mm -hmm. all right? Now, this is obviously a little bit older, but if you look at Bob Marley, all right, his music 100% did well in its time, Mm -hmm. right, for what it was relatively. He wasn't the biggest artist in the world, per se, but the music alone was doing well. And then at some point, there came a turn in his career where there was the you know, freedom fighting mm-hmm. that came along and his music, right? And him himself became yeah, symbolic symbolic yeah. of an entire movement, right? And you can go all around the world. Like I remember being in Brazil and <laughs> this uh, dude I, I was out there with, man, shout out to Bra- Bra- uh, Jabril. I ain't seen you in a minute, man. But um, everybody would be like, Bob Marley, Bob Marley, whenever yeah. that song, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, it kind of, sort of, but not really. You know what I mean? One of those type of things. He had the beard and, and, and the locks and everything. So uh, he has that face card, though, right? And when you think about it, and it's not till you really travel a lot of times, you start thinking about what like worldwide recognition recognition really is like. Yeah. Right. Like, there's only a select few when you get into what Bob Marley, Michael Jackson. Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, and you have people like in the modern day, Beyonce and Kanye, yeah. right? Have that. Um, but I think Beyonce is probably more limp. Even Kanye, both of them are a little bit more limp. It was funny, I was in a in the comment section the other day of um some random video, I don't even remember, but someone was talking about how wherever he's from like no one really knows who Kanye is Mm -hmm. which was in it's somewhere I think it was in South America or whatever but he was just like yeah like like people making a big deal like oh how can you not know who Kanye is like it's a Mm -hmm. lot of people who don't know who Kanye is which is like hard to imagine yeah right coming from America and I think I remember my uncle I believe I think it was my uncle who was telling me about that somebody I know had a friend that um got some money and they're in one of these spaces and places that Oprah is around and for whatever reason Kanye was there on that occasion too and he was like pretty upset right? cuz some lady didn't like know who he was yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So it's the thing, right? Like no yeah. matter how big you think, right? The world will humble you. The world will <laughs> humble you. It's a lot of people out there and everybody <laughs> doesn't have time, right? Yeah. Every like, you know, there's presidents of nations and 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 or kings and stuff that I don't know. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. what you a king or what? Like yeah. so you're just a normal person to me. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. All right. So I think this, like bringing it around, it's interesting that one, that we're in this age where you can still take advantage of pockets and create lasting value, but it's 
it's very unlikely to be on the scale that it used to be able to be yeah. on, right? Yeah. But at the same time, those small pockets have become bigger pockets, right? So for artists who are like, yo, I don't want to be pop, but I want to be whatever your version of indie and your specific category is, it's no longer not feasible to make a lot of money in a lot of these different um, sub genres and, and lifestyles. It's like, yeah. cause now it's like, you, it's not just about those people in your state or your country. You can reach those people across the world and it actually adds up to a decent amount of income, a lifestyle and people. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like pretty much we're not going to see as many massive superstars, but we're going to see a lot more successful artists, mm. which I also think is going to make yeah. becoming a massive superstar even more coveted and wanted by artists. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. The goalpost changes like every five years, right? Like, everybody wants to be, I just want to be a successful artist. Like, when they got the chance to do it, it's like, well, now I want to be famous. Like, uh, now, you, now you're asking for something that's much yeah. harder to do yeah. um, than it is then. But I mean, I, it, I think we talk about once, right? Like, the middle class of artists is going to grow. Mm-hmm. I mean, by default, the lower class is going to grow as well because more people are going to see the middle class and the upper class. I'm like, oh, that's just easy. Let me get in on that. You know what I'm saying? Cheaper to get in. But I do think that's the cool thing about it. Is, yeah. you know, going back to even like the classical artist conversation. I mean, I think it's easier to become the face of a cultural movement when there are less of you fighting for that spot, right? Which is the benefit that any artist really pre, I would argue, probably modern radio had the benefit of, right? Like you were a big fish in a, in a, in a pond with nobody else in it. Or, <laughs> right. or a, a, a pond of people that we didn't know even existed. Right. And, you know, so we go back to that th- thousands of years ago. First ones to, to kind of do it, you know, so maybe not the first ones to do it, but the first of their kind kind of doing it right. And then we're learning about them. They became a culture of movements. And I don't, I can't think of any modern day superstar classical artist. So that, nah. I don't know if you remember, I had this mentor that um dominated the jazz charts. Oh, yeah, yeah, Because yeah, of yeah, that, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah. he told me he hopped into jazz because he's like, jazz is so underserved right now. There's no superstar jazz artists. Like, all the big superstars are, artists from decades ago so if you come in you get one two good jazz songs like you can easily shot to, shoot to the top of the charts and that's exactly what he did he came in <laughs> produced one or two you know what i'm saying good songs and shot to the top and then he can say he's a billboard charting jazz artist right Man. and so i look at it the same way with classical music like if most of the people that dominate classical music are artists that, have, that we've known about forever you know and for, for, for forever part of our lifetime who's coming on to take that spot probably a hard thing to take because of that exact thing this is the apex of it that we've all been taught you're not getting any bigger than Mozart. You're not getting any bigger than, than Chopin and <laughs> Tchaikovsky, however you say his name. You know what I'm saying? But so they get a they get, ghost, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, right? Exactly, bro. You were literally fighting ghosts, <laughs> fighting dead people. And I look, I found it too. So apparently, uh, Mozart was making, or uh, Beethoven was making four thousand florins a year, which uh, comes out to about a hundred thousand dollars in today's currency. He was making like hundred k a year. It's not, it's not as bad as I thought. Yeah, me either. He I, was doing decent. Yeah, bro. He was all day. You know, he's like. High value man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he was up there. <laughs> uh, hey, sh- <laughs> shout out to Mozart, bro. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I mean that that's that's really interesting because you like want to transition to this advice. This rare, this we got a really dope step for y'all, and it's gonna change how you approach your content going forward. Period. Mm-hmm. But before I get to that, what you just said is it makes me think about you have these genres. If you happen to be listening to this and you're a classical artist, I'm surprised, <laughs> but we appreciate it. Or you're in opera, or you're one. in jazz. I know we got somebody in jazz. Yeah. Applying modern marketing techniques. Hey, that's that's the way to go because most of y'all's genres are behind and so orthodox that somebody just has to break the mold and like bite the bullet, be a little bit disliked by the old guard and get some, you know, hey, get some money, get some money, <laughs> right? Get some people who actually aren't as purist to that genre to show you love. And now you go commercial and you'll probably be the one right at the moment, because especially things like that, those type of genres, it's hard to see a, a complete re renaissance right mm. or a reawakening where it's like oh yeah this jazz artist has popped out and now he's going crazy and all of a sudden now there's four or five more it's harder it might create a generation that then thereafter like re um innovates 
but yeah, you're not going to see like all of a sudden three jazz artists pop up at the same time, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Partially because of marketing and how people exploit shit, right? And what I mean by that is, let's just imagine you got some jazz artist pop out of nowhere or a classical artist. Let's go with a classical artist. He pops up and for whatever reason, he's commercially cool. He gets that. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Everybody's going to start doing collaborations with that person. Yeah. Right, they're gonna want that. They're gonna want the number one. It's the value of being considered number one. People want to use your equity and seem cool because you're of the moment, and that's not really gonna give much chance to the rest of them mm -hmm. to hit that level. All right, you might have some people who now open their ears more up uh, to the genre or that music style, mm -hmm. so you'll still see an increase in listens in that space, but. It'll be a big wealth gap. Let's say that. Yeah. You know, 100%. wealth of attention. Yeah. You know, uh, let alone money and all the and streams and all that other stuff. Yes, hundred percent. Like something like that would, like you said, more so be setting up the next generation of classical <laughs> artists. <laughs> Give me, hey, you know, you guys here now. Hey. Now y'all still probably kind of ass out, but yo, the next ones in 10, hey. 15 years, they're gonna be great. You know, same way with rap, right? It's like how all the old rappers were basically martyrs for rappers today. You know what I'm saying? Hey. They had to walk. So a little baby could fly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just the, the way of the game. <laughs> hey.